folks. And over a course of time, I forgot the, the length of time, they monitored the patients. Now the three that they gave the placebo to were real upbeat, happy-go-lucky, laughing all the time, positive-thinking people. The three they gave the cancer drugs to were negative, we're going to die, this is horrible, have nothing to live for type people. Not the type of people my mom used to say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and keep going. They wasn't like that. So over the course of time, out of the three that were really upbeat and positive, two lived. Now two lived. No, no drugs whatsoever. Two lived. Positive thinking people. Grateful people. Two people lived. Out of the three that took cancer drugs, they all died at one. All died at one. So you see, you had two over here that lived and two over here that died. Now two over here had the cancer drugs. They had every medical possibility to get better, but because they had negative thoughts, they did not get better. Amen. What you think about a situation greatly affects the outcome. So it's important to keep a positive attitude. Sometimes that's hard to do. Sometimes our confidence gets beaten down. I've had my confidence beaten down. Um, without going into extreme detail. Y'all know my story about me and my ex-husband, what happened there. Some of you know more than others. But you know it was really bad. Before I left home, I was really upbeat, kind of like I am now. But when I come back, I had a lot of people tell me, this isn't the Jesse we know. Mm -hmm. If you're around a situation that's negative for long enough, you get beat down long yeah, enough, yeah. you start feeling beat down. Right. You start playing into that. We've all heard the story about the eagle that was tied up at the some kind of show, I'm going to get this story wrong, but I'm going to get the point across. But he was tied up and he would fly out every day, but he would get to the end of the chain and he'd stop. Wouldn't go no further. Then one day, somebody had mercy on that eagle and they come in and they bought that eagle. They said, I'm going to let this eagle go. And when they took the chain off, the eagle would still fly, but he would only go to that point. He got so used to having a ceiling there, he stopped. Yeah. And sometimes the devil beats us down so bad, we get used to flying to that certain spot and we stop. And it's hard to pull ourselves out of it. But tonight we have a hope of coming out of anything yeah. that's depressing, anything that's uh, going to get us down. We have a greater hope than depression. We have a greater hope than that. And I thank the Lord for that tonight. Amen. Building your confidence. When I was in that low period in my life, I struggled spiritually. And inevitably, I gave up on God. I started to blame God for things that was happening in my life. And a lot of it was, well, all of it was my own fault. You know when you get up when you're feeling bad, you can choose to do two things. Put on a happy face. This is my situation. I'm going to plow through it. Put on a frowny face. And you know what gets worse when you do that? It gets worse. You fall down to the, literally the depths of despair. You get to where you can't eat, you can't drink. All you can do is cry. Don't look like there's any hope. And even the thought of Jesus Christ, not really, didn't mean it didn't inspire me. Made me mad. I thought, well, I done this, I done this, I done this. I worked for the Lord. I done all of these things. I, I, I done everything I was supposed to do, and look what happened. Uh -huh. Now, I relate this too. A lot of times, we blame God for our own wrongdoing. That's right. Now, I had a decision to make before I got married. I felt the check. God was using me. I was, I was active in church. I was speaking occasionally. I was, doing, I was working for the Lord. And I knew the Lord wanted me here. But my desires, you know, self comes up a lot. My desires wanted me to do something the Lord didn't want me to do. I wanted to be married. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be married. Everybody in here wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be married. Everybody wants to be accepted. But where I fell short is I didn't put my foot down and said, if you want me, you got to come here. I got to work here. Young people, old people, any people, if God's got to work for you and He does if you're saved, you better pray long and hard about the person you marry who you spend the rest of your life with. Now that's not coming from somebody that's been happily married for 60 years. That's two different viewpoints. Which don't, don't take what they're saying for granted. It's important. I'm telling you tonight from experience, it could be the best decision you ever made or it could be the worst decision you ever made. The reason it could be the worst decision, not only could you be unhappy in your marriage, you could lose out spiritually from the person you marry. You know, you can fall in love, completely in love, with the absolute wrong person. You can't help who you fall in love with. God made us to love, right? 
Right. He makes to love one another. He makes all to want love. So, uh, you know, if uh, Sister Suzanne, some old joke comes along that makes you feel good about yourself, and you make him feel good about himself, but he's an atheist, you fall in love with him, shouldn't shouldn't marry him. That's right. That's right. Brother Ethan, you might be in love with your girlfriend. Say you want children, but she don't. Shouldn't get married. That's an issue of contention there. You're not going to change a person's mind, though. Right. You can be head over heels in love with them. But once you get married, you stick your head in the sand and say, well, you know, it'll work out. It'll be better. But it never does. Because you're going to hold their point. If you're elevated up here and they're here, guess who's moving? It's easier to fall than it is to climb. In rare cases, you see somebody climbing up to meet their spouses. Uh, religious views and different things. We've been blessed with a couple ministers here that's done that. My daddy being one of them, Brother Brad being another. But they married godly women, was raised in the truth, and they accepted the truth. They accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they rose to the occasion that's rare. If you think you're going to get into a situation to change another person, it's likely you're going to be the one that gets changed. Now, I didn't mean to go off into all that, but it probably needed to have been said is why I said it. But all of that comes back to this. Getting into wrong situations can greatly affect your personal confidence, therefore affecting your spiritual confidence. And a small decision you make today can make a huge outcome, even tomorrow, especially 10 years down the road. Right. You know when you throw a pebble in the, in the water, it starts out little, and then the rings get bigger and bigger and bigger, That's right. right? That's the same thing with every decision we make. It's important to seek God with every decision we make. Amen. Now, it's good to have physical confidence. There's something that looks like confidence, and that's arrogance. That's something we should shy away from. Amen. Brother Paul here, in the Ephesian letter, he said that he was the least of all the saints. He had a spirit of humility. But then he went on to say that we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of Him. So that means you can boldly access God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And have a spirit of humility. Yes. Doesn't mean you have to be arrogant. Um, if you're an arrogant person, you cannot work for God. Some people have to work hard at arrogance than others. Sometimes I have to work at arrogance. It's easy to get puffed up in self. If anybody says they don't ever get puffed up in self, they need to come to the altar. Because everybody at some point has been made to feel really good about themselves. Yes. And the devil likes to take that and make it into something that it's not. Some people are worse than others. Some people might be just a little bit. But me, I know, especially when I was a younger Christian, I had to work really hard at, just that was good on that guitar. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you start feeling good about yourself. But I'll tell you what, it was a wake-up call the first time I played with some professional musicians. I was like, well, i got to work on that a little bit, don't I? You know, that's how the devil does. He, like, he likes to puff you up. Sure. Now, you might get up here and make a good talk, and the devil will start saying, boy, be a preacher. You know, you could be a really good preacher. You could evangelize all over the world. But you got to put those things down in your mind. And you got to say, listen, whatever the Lord wants me to do is what I want to do. Amen. If it's bringing parts, thank the Lord for that. If it's praying every chance that I get, thank the Lord for that. Too much confidence can lead to arrogance. So you got to be careful with that confidence. You never want to outstep the boundaries of God. Because where He has you is exactly where He wants you to be. Amen. The second thing we're going to deal with is spiritual confidence. This is very important. More so than our physical confidence. If you don't have spiritual confidence, if you don't have knowledge, you're going to lose out. You're going to be defeated by lies. Um, over in 2 Timothy, let's turn our real quick, chapter 2, 15. I want to read it word for word, but what it says is that we should study to show ourselves approved, but I want to get the... Ooh, so let's turn there. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Amen. rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman needing not to be ashamed, Amen. rightly dividing the truth. You see, when you study the word, you become knowledgeable of the word of God. And when you become knowledgeable of the word of God, there's nothing that's going to make you ashamed of the truth that's in the, in the Word of God. And after you've got that truth, you're going to rightly divide the Word. You're going to find the truth. You know, you're going to search out the truth in the Bible. That's how people 